Room correction lies. Out and out, absolute truth, room correction lies. If you think about it, any type of room correction goes through this process. You place the microphone in the room, you hit start, it generates a set of tones, it records that, it processes it, it shows you the corrections it's going to make, and it uploads them to the system, or something very similar. But here's the rub. I'm not aware of a room correction system that measures the room, applies the correction, measures the room, and shows you what it's actually done. So, you can see this for yourself. If you use, for example, uh, Anthem Arc Genesis, if you do a quick measure before, and you do the subwoofer, and you take that quick measure, take a screenshot of it, or photograph it with your phone, then run your room correction. You'll see at the end, when you uh, review the results, that you've got this beautiful, slightly wiggly curve that fits on the subwoofer curve that you want. Perfect, I've got amazing results, right? Not so fast. Then, after you've uploaded to your system, you've finished all of the measurements, and you are convinced now that your room system is perfect, Let's go back to the first quick measure that you took. What you'll possibly notice on there, somewhere as a probably a couple of big peaks and somewhere a really big dip. Now, if you don't have that, that's all good. You're sitting in a great position. But nine times out of 10, you're probably sitting in somewhere that's suffering some, from some modal influence. That means that you've got um, two, destruct or two waves, two negative waves meeting and creating a, a dip. Now, you can't EQ that out, right? The only way to deal with that is multiple subwoofers or moving your seats. So, the thing is, if you've noticed that dip on your first quick measure, now, do your room correction as we talked about. Go back, before you pack up everything, go back to a quick measure, select your subwoofer once again, and, this, and then at the bottom, there's a switch for apply room correction. Turn that on so that your room correction is active, and take another quick measure. Have a look at the results. I bet you anything, that massive dip is still there. That's because it doesn't matter how much energy you throw at a dip, the dip either gets bigger or stays the same size, but you just keep throwing energy at a subwoofer. Now, I'm not aware of what goes on in the background of these algorithms. I don't know if they quietly don't do anything. I don't know if they try and EQ it out. But what I do know is it doesn't change. And yet the problem is the results show this near perfect curve. I believe, and I've not got no proof or evidence, and I don't imagine anyone's going to admit to it, that the reason no EQ system, any of them, uh, do a post measurement result is because they want you to assume that it's going to be perfect. But if you don't believe me, have a look yourself. The area that is under the transition frequency, that's the area where the room applies the most impact. Wherever there's a dip, you are likely to see those dips remaining. Now, some dips can be EQ'd out. They can be a factor of the speaker. But ultimately, if it's a modal response, you can't get rid of it without moving the subs or moving your seat or using multiple subs. That's just it. Those are the facts. That's physics. And as we all know, you cannot change the laws of physics. So this is the reason that with a lot of room auto EQ, that sometimes when you turn your auto EQ off, it actually sounds better. So be aware of this, at least. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. But there's always a reason to verify. That's why I carry test tools with me that generate their own tones, that measure, and I can see the results afterwards and then apply the corrections that we really need. What I generally do though, is I set up the subwoofers first so that they are uh, a flat response or at least just a peaky response that can be EQ'd out and then we can get a great outcome. I worked on a system the other day that had a massive dip at 60 hertz. We moved a subwoofer up the wall towards him. Everything uh, then was on uh, an equal line or higher. And so the EQ could then just take those bumps out. And we ended up with an amazing response. <clears throat> so the fact is, 
automated room equalization lies. Right? It's just a best effort. And as I said to you, you know, it takes measurement, applies the maths, shows you the mathematical outcome, but it does not measure or show you the physical results of the changes to the room. So here is a screenshot of um, a subwoofer, quick measure. Here is the graphic of the room correction that it's saying it's made. And here is a screenshot of that subwoofer after room correction. Speaks for itself, doesn't it? It hasn't fixed it. So I just wanted everyone to be aware of that. Um, all of these things, right, have some weaknesses or other. And because of the physical limitations of a room, you really have to get your subwoofers in or seats or both in the right position. Okay, I hope this has proved useful to you and I hope it's shone some light on some of the challenges with room automated equalization.